Welcome to the Dalton Gallery at the Center for the Arts. My name is Mike Gentry. I'm the gallery manager here at the Arts Council of York County. And today we're going to discuss with Glenn Miller his paintings and his exhibit, Considering the Past. How's it going, Glenn? It's doing great, thank you. It's great to be here. Well, I want to thank you, first of all, for being here, and second of all, for sharing this wonderful work with us. Uh, so you have a series of 25 paintings in here, and the title of the exhibit is Considering the Past. And a lot of these paintings to take, depict figures in a natural landscape. So what inspired you to paint work about nature and humans? There's a lot of history behind uh, an answer to that. Growing up in rural Appalachia, I grew up in the woods literally, I think, had a lot of free time in that sort of environment. So it's always been a place I've gone to uh, a lot. And uh, over, over the years, I've been a visitor in those kind of environments by being uh, an avid hiker. So I spend a lot of time on the trails in the Southern Appalachian Mountains as well. So I draw inspiration for, for the imagery, at least, for the, the, what's depicted here from that. And, and some of the other inspiration comes from some from that cultural shift from the way I grew up to where, to where I am now as well. Uh, so the narrative element of it, the inspiration sometimes is more a personal experience mm -hmm. or story somehow that has sort of evolved something that's happened to me in that. And I, I read a good bit too, especially uh, in the history of human nature, if you will, or <laughs> the evolution of human nature. And so I've always been interested in that connection between human, being human and being in the natural world. Well, I think that comes across pretty clearly in the work. Um, with your work, you have a very educated like, response and understanding of the figure. But from what you've told me before, these aren't models. You, you, <laughs> you kind of come up with these figures yourself? I, I do. Now, I, I, just not in, I don't use models entirely. Um, I, I grew up. I'll sidetrack a little bit here. Yeah, I grew up in an area where there was no art education. So I had no art training until college. Okay. But I drew, I drew all the time. And a lot of, looking back at some of the work, uh, the majority of it was people and figures. And even some I was not supposed to be doing, like caricatures of my teachers, or <laughs> not, not supposed to be drawing in this class, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, so I've always had this interest in drawing people and I was drawing people long before I went to college. Uh, but I became very interested in figure drawing, and I wound up eventually teaching figure drawing a great deal. So I had just a, a very intensive background in that. But when I set out, to, especially with these, uh, in this last series, I sort of created a wall full of characters, of invented characters, mm -hmm. that I could draw from to do, tell the stories I wanted to tell. So sometimes these figures exist before the painting does. Uh, and if I get into a situation, uh, for example, <laughs> that, it, I will still sometimes set up a camera and take a photo of my hands or something to make sure I have the, you know, the, the, the structure the way I want it. But the, the initial the drawings of the figures are pure invention. Yes. Wow. I didn't know there was that much depth to those figures oh, at first. And that's <laughs> wonderful, like, because I didn't think about the figures being the the starting point in these characters in these spaces. Uh, and another thing that impresses me about your work is your approach to color. Because each painting in this series has its own like color, like structure, color composition that you're working with. Um, especially this one. This one is autumn colors. But you, your response to picking this like dark blue green as a, as a shirt and how it stands out, but still doesn't stand out in an uncomfortable way. It stands out in a very um, intentional way. So, uh, what is what is your approach to color when you when you come to one of these paintings? Okay, I'll back up a little bit to what I said before about being self-taught in things. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much opportunity to paint a great deal before college, but but I did some. And even when I started painting, I probably was more in the self-taught, and I will refer to that as instinctual kind of things. That, uh, and I think I still try to approach that 
way, just an instinctive choice. This, this should be kind of gold, I have this kind of thing, and I'll probably need some blues or greens in there somewhere to make that work. So the formal, the, the educated brain is not shut off. It, it can't do that entirely. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a back and forth sometimes between that. If I get into a problem solving situation, I become more formal as the values are not working with that. But in, to get closer to the answer of what you said, and this is probably formal, when I see some of these colors happening in here, I need the depth of that color to play against it. Because mm. I play a lot, of, even in using of negative spaces, I, it's almost flat in, in one sense, in that I try to bring like, this little push-pull thing with the color back and forth. So uh, if, if this had been too, too blue for me, I would have <laughs> gone back and, uh, and made it so that it sort of repeated a value at least, or an intensity even, of another color. So okay. they're kind of echoing to me visually. Well, it's interesting you talk about space because I'm looking at this painting specifically. And, you know, one of the things we're taught in art school is that, you know, if you want something to fall into the background, you paint it uh, more muted. And if you want something to come forward, you want it to paint it more intense and saturated. But even in your backgrounds here, there is a level of saturation. They, they, the colors do mix and there are more muted colors, but you do a very interesting job of like, creating a foreground and a background, but they're also n not always far away from each other, especially this one, they're, they're not very far away from each other because of the similar similarity in hues. And so I feel like you're maybe playing against that role in, in this painting specifically, because uh, the way I think you display depth in this painting is different. It's more about detail and scale so things in the background don't have as much detail. The, the paint mixes on the canvas a little more. And then things in the foreground have much more crisp edges and a, and, uh, a lot more like detail and focus. Like these yellow flowers have a lot more detail and focus than this area that is suggesting in the background. I, I just find that really interesting. And that's something that like keeps me like diving in and backing away that's from the painting, great. which is which is what's so exciting about flat art often, because you know, if you can spend time with it and it can capture you, like that to me, that's some of the entire value of art. Like, right. If it doesn't capture you, well, you know. Well, and I'll I'll take off at that point and try to answer based on that point, is that, you know, I'm I'm very capable of creating an illusionist illusionistic space mm -hmm. of creating depth through that. Uh, atmospheric perspective and, and, and loss of intensity as you move back. That's true. Uh, I wanted to move away from the photographic kind of representation yes. in that, uh, even though you can do that with Photoshop now. <laughs> but that the, I prefer to think of it as an image that kind of stops there, except in thought, that it's not a window into the world or into a world necessarily, but keeps the viewer in that space a little bit more. Hmm. And it's a little bit of an abstract kind of concept, I suppose. But that's what I always loved about work like, well, Picasso was the master of that <laughs> negating space or you know, creating that yeah. ambiguous space, I refer to it, uh, where you, you're not certain whether you're supposed to see background or foreground, or maybe background here and foreground there, and shift around. Um, and some others do that, some do that more than others. To me, most of the shapes like these are actually painted in with negative area. Mm. The, you know, the tree's roughed in, okay. but the definition is done by background. Yeah. If there is, I don't use the word background. I wouldn't let my students use that word. But <laughs> you know, there's figure and ground, and those can shift okay. back yeah. and forth if you allow it to. And some of that goes back to education too, because we're educated in a time of a lot of color field abstraction which you know, has that flatness or reflattening of space a, a good bit in that as well. But yes, I, I do work back and forth. To me, there's uh, no wasted space in a good painting. Oh, that's a good point, yes. It, <laughs> that everything has some, some significance, even if it's a, you know, it's a small de Kooning or something in there, then I'm interested in that. I'll, I'll play with that if it mm. happens. It's not, it's, sometimes it's not an intentional thing, but if it did happen, I would enjoy that. Wonderful. That negative space. So, it, 
so we're sitting here talking about viewer and space and painting and things like that, but and, and also concept about these characters. So when somebody comes to visit this exhibit, what is something, what, what experience do you want to give them and what do you want them to walk away with when they walk out the door after they're done seeing this exhibit? Uh, I know yeah, it's a loaded I, question. <laughs> it is, it is. There's lots of things I would like to happen. Uh, I, I think every artist would like to be, what's, what's the right word, understood <laughs> in, in that sense. But we're not always, and we accept that after. You've been around as long as I have. Uh, you come to expect, and as I've had said about uh, uh, the, the painting behind you, what a pretty, what a pretty painting. And to me, there was nothing pretty behind the original concept at all, and I'm probably getting away a little bit from, from your, your question there, but the, you, I can't control what the viewer takes away. I'm happy if they just enjoy it. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I do hope, though, that there's a tangent somewhere that, that they can connect to at least one point of that somehow. Mm -hmm. There has a little, if it asks a question, then I've succeeded. Okay. In that, because the story behind them a lot of times, and if, if I may use this piece as an example yeah. of the gardener over there, um, this was actually started, at, I was working on the whole thing of using f people in nature mm -hmm. and figures in nature in that, and this was a time of a lot of ugly things happening <laughs> in public and a lot of public statements which were just uh, very disheartening losing friends on social media for ugly posts and whatever. But the word, uh, the word empathy was thrown around a good bit as it almost became a dirty word in some situations like mm -hmm. that. So my beginning of that painting really had to do with, is there any way with this nature and figure that I could suggest empathy? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, to me, the, the, I went to a gardener as in the perfect example of a caretaker one who you know, starts things, takes care of them, is responsible if it's going bad or whatever. Uh, so I went about in my yard. All those things were blooming at the time in my yard um, and, and just sort of built from that idea. I'm not sure a viewer would walk away without an explanation mm. for that. So, <laughs> but an artist has to have a starting point, has to have a, yeah. a motivation to go uh, to, to those places, I think. And I, I think that's... I think it's clear, maybe not the, the specific story that you're talking about, the specific experience you had, but I think it's clear that the artist, you, had a starting point with this body of work and that you were connected to this body of work and there's more depth to what your experience is bringing to the work because you're not just deciding to paint these plants and a figure. I mean. You're portraying emotion, you're portraying mm -hmm. a character that you've thought about, that you, you've invested in. And I mean, you meet somebody, I don't know the experience that you've had. And when I look at this painting, I don't know the experience this character's had or the experience the artist had to create this painting. But I put myself into it um, as, as a viewer. And I think that's, I think that's something that viewers can take away is that, right. that, I, that connection with the character and the space that you've created. And I mean, of course, there's a lot of beauty in what you're doing here with color and your paintings in general, but there's a lot of uh, human emotion in connection I think, that is there for the viewers to take. I think that's, I think that's Right, I agree, and, I, and perhaps the, the, the value in that is the shared level of experience, not the shared experience, but the depth of experience that comes across is, is shared and people share. Yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm bringing my own experiences. Right, these, well, that's, that's going to happen. That should happen, probably. Yeah. We, have, we accept that. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for speaking with me today. Um, I look forward to spending more time with these paintings while, while they're up. So. Thank you. And let me say, it's, it's just uh, the first time opportunity I've had to put this entire body of work in one place at one time. So it's very valuable to me. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you can come by here at the Arts Council of York County Center for the Arts at 121 East Main Street to come and see Glenn Miller's work in this exhibit.
exhibit titled Considering 